morning. Today's scripture reading is Psalms 127. It's kind of a short one. I hope those boys in the booth have time to prank me. Unless the Lord builds a house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand and watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Can you hear me? Good morning. So a few weeks ago, and my tan's already fading, we went to Hawaii for a couple weeks. And when I was there, I got the privilege of listening to Bob preach and then to Lowell preach. And one of the things that he said just kind of caught my heart. He said he really wasn't sure why God laid it on his heart to say what he was saying, but he needed to say it. And he talked about family. And while I was there, I had it all planned out in my own mind, and my own abilities, what was logical. I would go in from the growth in the vine and everything and start talking about a life in the Spirit. Well, I know exactly why God wanted Lowell to talk about family, because that's where He tuned my focus to. So today we're going to continue that on with family. So we'll have four weeks of it. Maybe you're getting tired of it, maybe you're not. But what God told me is, is that If we can't learn to get along as families, how can we ever learn to love Him? How can we ever learn to love our church? How can we ever love those that we call unlovable as Jesus Christ loved and gave Himself for the church? So that's what we're going to talk about today. When I was there, I got to spend time with my ohana, my family. And I was warned before going, you're going with Debbie and Barry? I don't know how that's going to be. And they were probably warned the same thing. But you know what? We had a wonderful time, probably the best vacation that I've ever had, or at least one of them. The only person that wasn't there in my ohana was my son. But we had a great time. One of the things that my sister said to me while I was there was that I was sensitive. And I am sensitive. And I take that as a good way and a bad way, but I don't take it as offensive by any means. I take it as learning. I am sensitive because I care about people, and I care about this church. I care about my family. And it is my responsibility to raise my children up to be godly children. And it is my responsibility now, and I'm so proud and honored to do that for my church family as well. And I just want to say this, because I will say things that you find offensive. And you will hear people say, oh, I didn't like his sermon here and there. Or I ran this person off or that person. I promise to you that I will preach the Word of God. And that's exactly what the people did in Acts that we learned from our study. When they were persecuted, instead of saying, oh, poor, poor me, and I do that because I am sensitive. I go through my stages. Yes, I am. (laughs) Of I go poor, poor, pitiful me. But I examine it and I take it to God and I say, am I being obedient to you? Because that's all that matters. I am not worried about being obedient to anyone in this earth. I'm not worried about what's popular or anything else. I'm worried about teaching the Word of God. So I will not vary from it, whether it's acceptable or not. And I say that because today we're going to go into more of God's Word. And we're going to hear, children, obey your parents. And that's not something children want to hear. And we're going to hear, wives, submit to your husband. And that's something sometimes ladies don't want to hear. Fathers don't necessarily want to hear when they're not doing what their jobs are called for. But the words are clear right here. We've just got to be obedient and follow them. So I just want to make that commitment to you that I will preach the Word of God and I will preach it boldly. If you have problems with me, bring them to me. I am sensitive, but I'll get over them and I'll take them to God. If you have problems with the Word of God, then you need to take it to Him. Okay? So that's my commitment to you. So let's start in prayer. Father, we thank You so much for Your Word. We thank You that it is true, that it does stand the test of time. Whether it's popular or not, Father, your words are true and they are there for instructions in righteousness. 
to bring us to a better relationship with you, to get us to understand your love, your love for us, so that we may understand your love for others as well. We're not perfect. We're sinners saved by grace, and we thank you so much for that. And I pray, Lord, that your spirit be upon this place today and that your words ring out to us. And we don't just hear them and walk away, Father, but we apply them in every part of our life that we can. Help us to be your obedient children and help us to look forward to the prize that you have set for us. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for your love through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this sermon is entitled, Behaving Like a Child of God. And I could not stress the importance of families enough. So we've got to mention children and everything in it. So maybe it's a good thing that there's not children's church today. I wish there was more children. So listen up, guys and girls. And we're still all children. So there's still things that we can learn and apply. And today, fathers and mothers have seemed to have forgotten about the importance of children, especially their importance in raising them. Because the world says that this and this is what they should do. And they start to go down those paths because that's what they hear all the time. They hear it in commercials. They hear it at school. They hear it in the playgrounds. What they don't hear unless we teach them is to serve God fearfully, fearfully and with a whole heart. And that's our responsibility as far as parents. And if we don't follow those guidelines, then instead of, as Lowell said, training them up, which is correcting their behavior, then we're letting them go down a road or path of destruction. And the Bible says that path is broad. But the road leading to righteousness is narrow. It's our responsibility to train them up. Children are a blessing Don't forget that. They're not something that happened and, oh, well, I had kids now and i got to suffer the consequences. They are a blessing from God. It's a miracle that I can't understand. Evolution can't explain how we can birth a child and what a blessing that is. And we think it's wonderful at first. Then the crying and stuff comes in and we get a little perturbed with that. Then they start walking and we can do things with them. We can throw them up over our heads and Mama says, don't do that, you know. But... Then they reach a point where they want to have their independence, don't they? And they challenge your authority. Well, the Bible's clear about that. The parent is to have the authority. Children are to obey their parents. And we're going to look at that. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 through 25, and let's see what it says. And remember, these aren't my words. That's why why I follow them up with Scripture. It says, Wives, submit to your husbands. And what does it say after that? As is fitting to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not embitter, which means to aggravate, provoke, exasperate, or irritate your children. Or what? They will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything and do it not only when their eye is on you and to win their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as, with, as for working for the Lord, not for men. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a re- reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for his wrong, and there is no favoritism. Men love these verses because they hear this. Why submit to me? I am the husband. I am the man. And they hear children Obey me, because I am your father. But they don't look at what follows right after each verse. It says, after it says, wives submit, it says, husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. If you love your wives, guys, guys, as Christ loved the church, if you put her up on a pedestal, if you treat her like she is the precious flower that she is, she'll submit to you. She won't submit to you in a way, like I said, that is degrading to her or anything else. She'll submit to your love and your authority because God has set up that authority. She will love you because you love her enough to give your life for her. And after children, it says, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. It then goes on to say, Fathers, do not embitter them. Don't hold it over their heads, but train them up. I mentioned last week, and some people may even take it wrong, that I kicked Jacob out of the house when he was 18 years of age. Well, that sounds cruel. Well, the reason that I did, and you can ask him, and he'll say he knows exactly why I did, because I continued to warn him about his ungodly behavior and what he was doing and acting, and I gave him an ultimatum. 
And it tore me up when he hit 18th birthday, and he's legally considered a man. He was a man much before that in my eyes. And he knew the decisions that he was making, just like I know the decisions I'm making in my life. And he saw me love the Lord half-heartedly, and I had to work on that. But he knew what he did, so I had to kick him out. It's better that I gave him a line that he had to cross or not cross and he disobeyed than me to say, oh, it's okay and keep on. I had to teach him what was right and wrong. He knew it. And if you ask him today, he'll be thankful for that. Most of our conversations today, at least half of our conversations, involve spiritual matters. Dad, what do you think about this matter? What do you think about that matter? Because I took time to ground him and train him in God's Word. Was it easy? No, it was not easy. And it was terribly hard to put down the law and say, you've disobeyed enough, here's what I told you would happen. It was terrible. But I had to be obedient to God first. I had to train Him up. And I am seeing the blessings from that now, and I hold on to that because God's Word does tell me that if I train Him up in the ways of the Lord, He will not depart from it. He even quoted that verse to me last night. And he said, Dad, that's why I do follow God. Because you set down the parameters. You train me. So even though it may seem harsh, you've got to train your children up. You've got to teach them right from wrong. You've got to teach them to fear and love the Lord their God. Because if they can't respect you, how can they ever respect God? How can they ever respect this world that they've got to live in? A husband is to be patient, loving, and kind. He's not supposed to yield it over his wife. He's supposed to be like Corinthians 13 says... Love is patient, kind, not envious, not boastful, not rude, not self-seeking, not easily angered, doesn't keep records of wrongs, is not evil, but instead rejoices in truth, always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres, is never failing. Just as Christ loved and gave Himself a sacrifice for His, for his bride. And that comes from 1 Corinthians 13 and Ephesians 5. Ladies, if you had that kind of love, would you not want it? Would you not be submissive to it? There wouldn't even be a need for Harlequin romance novels anymore, would they? You wouldn't need to read one because you would have that in your own life. And if you're the kind of father that you need to be, guys, then your children will respect you. Will it be hard? Yes, it will be hard. Will they go through rebellious times? Yes, they will. But they will see whether you believe what you say you're believing and you live a life of that or if your belief in God is just something that's half-hearted. They'll see the truth. And most likely, they'll follow after your ways. The passage tells us that fathers should not embitter their children. But instead, we should train them. We should not aggravate, provoke, exasperate, or irritate, but we should instruct and train them in the ways of righteousness. That takes a perfect balance, doesn't it, guys? It's not an easy job. So that means you need to be like the movie. You need to be courageous. You need to say that, I will follow you, Lord. I will teach your precepts. There's a part in the movie when it starts off where the guys are sitting around the table and they say, well, you've been a good dad. Don't beat yourself up. And the guy says back, I don't want to be a good dad. I don't want to be an okay dad. I want to be what God called me to be as a father. And that's not an easy job. But your children's fate is dependent upon it. There's another part in the movie, later in the ending, or towards the ending, where one of the boys is involved in, in a gang. And he says to the, to the one dad, he says, I don't have any family. I didn't have any dad to look up to. And I'm not saying that that's what will happen, but there's a good chance that's what will happen because he said, I don't have family. God has built it into each one of us a longing to be part of the family so that we'll seek Him out, that we'll seek out our Heavenly Father. And our family needs that examples of spiritual godly men that will be courageous and lead their families. If you haven't seen the movie, there's a few copies out there and I've got more movies. And remember that, that it's a ministry. That if you don't come, you can still take it to your families, you can take it to your friends, you can invite them over, you can give as a gift to whoever, but you can spread that message. Courageous is a movie that has a powerful message 
about, go- about men being godly men. Submit. Wives, submit yourself to your husband. That does not mean obey, but rather submit your rights and your wills to authority. Just as the man, just as you are supposed to r- submit your will, your rights to this life, to God, to live a life that He has called you to live. And let me tell you something, ladies, if you do that, you're the one that's in power because you gave Him that authority. He didn't take it. He didn't earn it. You gave Him the right to do it because He behaved the way that He should, and you behave the way that you should in God's eyes. Again, it says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. It's His order, His design. It's not equal rights or or male chauvinism or feminism. Those have no part in God's plan. God's plan is a plan for families to love each other, to have a hierarchy that relates them to God's authority, to His plans and His desires. And we need to consider those roles. The role of authority is very important in our homes. If we can't have authority in our homes, how can we have it in our church? How can we have it in our communities? And kids, if you're not submissive to your parents' authorities, you're going to be submissive to someone's authorities, and that may be somebody as far as legally in jail or whatever. You're still going to have to submit to authority. So why wouldn't you want to submit to your mother and father who love you? Now, does that mean that everybody has a perfect mother and father? No. Do you have to still obey your parents? Even as, as adults, do we still need to honor them, as Scripture says? Yes. It doesn't say that if my parents aren't what they're supposed to be, then I don't need to obey them. God's terms aren't conditional. They are children, obey your parents. Same way with wives, submit to your husbands. It's not if you have a good husband. Because again, wives, if you submit, children, if you obey, you may bring your father to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Your actions are important also. You're a part of God's family. So I couldn't go on and not bring in children or wives or mothers into that relationship because we all need to learn our roles as as family members in God's plans. And it said, children, obey your parents in everything. Not something, but everything. Now, again, God is your final authority. So that doesn't mean if your, your mom or dad tells you to do this, it's against God's wills. No, that's not the case. But you need to be reverent and respect your parents and respect authority because God has commanded it. A child should learn godly behavior at home. We said it before that families are building blocks for society. If they don't learn to be obedient at home, then how will they ever learn to be obedient in uh, society? If there's not obedience, what is the opposite of obedience? It's rebellion. What is rebellion? Sin. Plain and simple. If we're not following God's authority, if we're not following His rules, whether it's a husband, a wife, or a child, then we're being disobedient. We're rebelling against God. We're saying that my thoughts, my desires are more important than yours, God. I don't know about you, but I would rather listen to God's commands. And it's so cool with the children. Exodus or Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says this. Children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first command with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy life on the earth. And if you look at Exodus 20, verse 12, part of the Ten Commandments, it says this, Honor your father and your mother so that, it may live long, so that you may live long in the land your Lord God is giving you. Now, adults, when you're 18, you can do what you want, right? You don't have to obey your parents anymore, right? My dad and I have the best relationship now that we probably ever had because I understand and respect his authority better than I did. Do I obey everything he says? No, because he doesn't try to teach me to obey those. He knows that I'm a man and he's tried to train me upright. But I honor him. I will continue to honor him until he's gone. And kids, you need to remember that. Kids of all ages that we need to honor our parents. And it's so cool. we got Ten Commandments. But the one for children says, If I honor my mother and father, my days may be long upon this earth. It's the first command with a promise. Whenever I see God's promises, it just overwhelms me. 
Because I think that there's no need for Him to give us a promise. His command should be plenty. We should obey because He has told us to obey. But then when He gives a promise, He's saying, I know it's tough. I expect you to obey me and everything, but I am a loving God and I will give you promises as well. And a promise of long life is such a great promise. He wants the best for His children, all of His children, no matter what age we are. So we need to set our relationships right with our parents, with our children. We need to act like children of God so that we can function as a church the way we should, as a society the way we should. Romans 12, 1 through... Romans 1, sorry, verses 25 through 32 says this, They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves a due penalty for their perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, He gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice them. That's some pretty harsh things. But what blows my mind is that disobey parents is in there with that. God is a holy and righteous God, and He puts disobeying parents, no matter what age you are, in with murderers and God-haters. And He says that what has happened is we have exchanged the truth for a lie. This is truth. Whether it's acceptable, whether it's popular, God's words are true. They don't change in time and society changes. If they're not popular, we need to stand up for what's not popular. Because we need to stand up for what God has told us. Isaiah 54, 13 and 14 says this, All your sons will be taught by the Lord, and great will be your children's peace. In righteousness you will be established. Tyranny will be far from you. You will have nothing to fear. Terror will be far removed. It will not come near you. So if we teach the Lord, great will be your children's peace. It may not seem like it at the time because it's tough. You try to teach your children what's right, what's godly, and they're wanting to go seek the world because the world's told them that you're a bad parent and you don't want what's right for them and God's not necessary and there's many ways to, to salvation if it even matters. That's what they're hearing out there. So you've got to teach them what the Lord has told you to teach them. And if you do, your children, great will your children's peace be. They will have nothing to fear. John 8, 31 through 44 says this, To the Jews who believed Him, Jesus said, If you hold to My teaching, you are really My disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered Him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family. But a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me, because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence. And you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing, your own, you are doing things your own father does. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. 
The only father we have is God himself. And Jesus replied, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and now I'm here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. Why? Because you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. Your father is either God or the devil. You either are following his word or you are not. You can't pick or choose what you want to because it's easy. Or pick and choose what you want to because it's popular. Like Joshua said, he says, As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. He had to put down that ultimatum. And the people had to decide. And God gives His promises that if we are obedient, our children will have long life. That they will not depart from that teaching. That great will be their peace. 1 Timothy 5.8 says this, If anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for his immediate family, he is denied the faith and worse than an infidel in the King James Version or an unbeliever. Wow, those are strong words. And you can take it, it's the, the passage is talking about caring for widows and everything, but you can take it and apply it to the family as a whole. If anyone does not provide for his family, whether it's in training, whether it's in respect for the husband, whether it's in children obeying your parents, then they are compared to an unbeliever. What is an unbeliever? An unbeliever is not someone that just doesn't know the truth. They're someone who was told the truth and rejected it. They were someone that heard the gospel message and rejected it. Now you say, but I've received the gospel message. Well, if you receive the gospel message and you are rejecting to follow God's words, then you are an infidel. You are an unbeliever is what God is comparing you to here. You see the magnitude of that? Infidels refuse to believe even though they've heard the truth. They decide to reject God's word and as thus are punished as unbelievers. Luke 12 says this in in verses 45 through 48. But suppose the servant says to myself, My master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat the men servants and maid servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and at an hour he is not aware. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. That servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants, will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. If you know the truth, God holds you more accountable. Your punishment can be even more severe. Revelations 21, 7 and 8 tells us what the end result of an unbeliever is. In verse 7 it says, He who overcomes will inherit all this and will be his God and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the infidel, the vile, the murderers, the sexual, immor- sexually immoral, immoral, those who practice magic arts, the adul- idolaters and liars their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Now, I'm not saying if you don't follow every word in God's commands that you're going to hell. That's not what I'm saying at all. So don't think think it that way. But you are either following God's words and His obedience to your family and other aspects as well, or you're following the words of a liar, your father, the devil. The choice is simple. The choice is up to you. Our passage this morning was from Psalms 127, and it said this, Unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. It doesn't matter what you do to try to teach your children. It doesn't matter what you try to do in this world to be a success or anything else. If you build your house on anything other than the foundation that you find in this Word, then you're building in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stands guard in vain. In vain you rise up early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for He grants sleep to those He loves. Sons are a heritage from the Lord, children 
a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. God's roles for families, each and every one of us, is clear. If we are going to go on to be the kind of church we need to be, we need to start with the families we need to be. If we're going to have an impact on this world at all, we need to have the guidelines set down in our families. doesn't mean your family unit's perfect. doesn't mean that if you're missing mom or dad or don't have children, you don't still have a family unit. The difference is whether you're being obedient to God's commands. And if you're not, at any point in time, you can stop and repent and change directions. I thought I wanted to go on with sermons on spirit-filled life. I thought that would be the next logical thing to do with Acts because we learned about the power of the Spirit's life in those people in Acts, in the disciples and in the Christians. They were first called Christians there. But God kept pressing upon my heart, we need to act like families before we can learn how to act like Christians. I don't know if you understand that or understand what I'm saying. But if we can't be a Christian in our own home, if we can't stand up and raise our children right, if our children can't take the time to stand up for us, then how are we ever going to do it out in the world? So that's why I've wanted to teach about families. Will you commit today to your family, whether it's a messed up family or not? I ask you that. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for designing us to have relations. You created us to have a relationship with you. And Father, you gave us the blessing of not being alone. You provided a perfect mate for us. And you provided us with the blessing of having children, not just to populate the earth, but to have the blessings of knowing what a child means to us. And Father, it's our responsibility to raise them as parents, to be godly children. And Father, I just pray here the blessings upon each and every family today that will take the time to get on their knees and say, God, I give my family to you. I pray that your blessings will be upon them, that you will bless their obedience, that you will bring about peace in their family, that you will make a difference in their lives, and that we will as parents see our children be obedient in following you. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for our sins so that we could be restored into your family for all of eternity. We just thank you for that. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.